All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League 2017 Grand Finals. Tom Sess, Wooden poised to repeat as champions of the High School Star League here as they're up 2-1 to one over Garden Grove High School. Crusade Kid in here with Enderell bringing you the action, also brought to you in part by our friends at Twitch TV. And we're into the champion select for game two. Yeah, and all that being said, Blue Side's got a hundred percent win rate so far in this <laughs> series. So every if everything goes Damn. as it's been going, you now we're gonna see a Garden Grove victory. Yeah, right the Wooden wins in game five. Hello, Ender. Yeah, ex exactly. And then it's it's just all set. It's all set on the table so Why far. Why are you but leaking the, the script, dude? You know what? I I got to. I got I got to. I got to keep the people informed to make sure they know exactly what's going on. But wow, that is a departure from anything we've seen so far this series. Yeah, the Lucian locked in here for the ADK, and that's going to be on the side of Garden Grove, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, and of course, the, the Oriana ban away, actually, from Wooten High School, because we've seen first pick the last two games in a row, I guess they want to take that off the table, and now what I'm wondering is where this Lucian exactly is going to go, because of course you'd expect it was going to go to Cheeseburger for AD Carry, but we have seen that they played in the mid lane to great success very recently as well. Although the combo that worked so fantastically for Wooten in the last game, the Jax plus the Galio, is going to be repeated once more here. Yeah. And I just, I, I wonder if there is going to be an answer for it because it didn't really feel like Spider could match the Jax or could punish it for picking a very scaling champion out of the jungle. And he's got to change something up this time around or he's going to fall victim to it once more. Yeah, well, I hope they would have something planned out because they just went with the Graves, Riven, and the Jace ban here. But... What they're picking up is going to be the Shen and the Thresh in the bottom lane. So that is a power bottom lane right there, Thresh and Lucian. Yeah. Level 2 yeah, power the spike all the way. <laughs> very exciting down there. And, you know, the Lucian heavy duelist, but very limited range of sword mm -hmm. plays his signature Syndra. He's going to have such a tough time anytime he walks up to try and deal any sort of real damage in a team fight. He's going to get ulted and immediately blown up here. Yeah, so it's going to be a uh, second phase of this ban. So it looks like they want to focus in on the junglers. Kha'Zix, Zach already taken out the board as well as the Graves. And uh, we'll be seeing this Rek'Sai taken out of here as well, which is what we've been seeing uh, pretty constantly here from Spider. So he'll have, he'll have to go for something else. Yeah, I wonder if we even see a Gragas ban to come out here from Wooten. Spider did play that back in... If you recall, didn't necessarily have an outstanding performance on it, but if they really want to throw him off of some comfort champions and try to take away any real engaged potential, they can certainly do so. Yeah, so going to be seeing the Gragas band out of there as well. So lots of junglers being whittled down here. And last band will be on that Jin, so I won't be seeing that one in this game. And his response, Braum, pretty solid support to be locking in here. And it will be. Yep, I really like the Braum into the Lucian, into the Thresh right there. Not too difficult to apply those marks of the passive. And I think that rounding out this comp with something like a Caitlyn just to continue to dominate in the lane has always been a good champion uh, to focus up against Lucian specifically. Would be a good option for Fuichu in this match. And I just wonder, there's a lot of pick potential that has been locked in already from Garden Grove, but this Galio is so good at negating all that burst damage coming through, and it's going to be hard to try and break that barrier. Yeah, so at least locked in here of Vladimir as well. So some new champions in this game. Well, actually, a lot of new champions in this game, or in this match for Garden Grove. Like, has, has the Rashboon played this match yet? I don't think so, right? Yeah, we haven't gotten a Thresh. These are just five so new champions. They're fresh. Yeah, and I'm trying to think about how this Thresh fits in with the rest of the composition. Of course, we already said there's immense pick potential, but I actually think it can be very effective, specifically up against Positivity's, uh, Positivity's Jax. You know, if you can flay him out from getting on towards the back line, that could be useful, but it's not like there's anything to really peel on the back line. There is no back line here. For Garden Grove, you've got Cheeseburger who's going to be up on the front line. Stretva, too, is going to be going all in with the Hemo Plague. So Thresh and Kenton specifically in this game is going to be looking much more for the picks and going, starting off those fights with the rest of his team. Yeah, so this is going to be 
The locked in champions for game four. Garden Grove looking to bring it to a fifth game here as Tom says Wooden have a two to one lead. Looking to repeat as high school star league champions. And actually their the first championship that they won was a three one victory over Temple City High School back in twenty fifteen. So looking to see if they can do it again. Do they have the magic in them? We'll find out when we get on into our when we get on into the fourth game of our grand finals. We'll be right back with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League 2017 Grand Finals. Wooten High School looking to take it all here as they are leading 2-1. to one. 
Yeah, we would absolutely have the possibility of shutting down Garden Grove like they did in the last game, but it is a very new composition. Five champions that we have yet to be seen played in this series so far by Garden Grove. That can either be a very good thing for your team, you can catch your opponents off guard by a lot and snowball your way to victory, or it can be a very bad thing if you're not quite as practiced with that lineup. So we'll really have to see within these first few minutes whether or not Garden Grove have what it takes to push us to a game five. Yeah, it's exciting here for Wooden High School. Could be the first team to could be the first team to repeat as champions of the high school. So like they're they are the first team to repeat just to be in the finals. To be no no wait no they aren't. Never mind. They're the second team to repeat to be in the finals. To to just be in the finals. But we'll be seeing if they can make it through here. Garden Grove High School haven't putting up a fight in. Yeah, as you were saying, they're bringing a new comp into this game, so it's something that we're going to love to see and look to see what, how they play this one out. So, Sword already switching things up by coming into mid lane from the side. Yeah, playing very aggressive right there on the Syndra. And, you know, we do have a little bit of time now to talk about how these individual lane matchups end up working out. The Syndra into Vlad is a very interesting one because if you remember back to Season 6 Worlds in the pro scene, you know, Vladimir was the staple counter pick into the Syndra. You couldn't blind pick that champion with the Vladimir available, but times have changed a little bit as Vladimir has gotten his kit nerfed repeatedly in the past, and now the early laning phase. He couldn't really struggle up in this matchup. It's only till a little bit later on we can get an item or two underneath his belt where Sword is not going to be able to pressure him quite as heavily as he is right now. I'm interested to watch his bottom lane because Thresh and Lucian, I mean, both know memes aside, they're both known for being so strong when they hit that level two and uh, they're about to hit it here. So we really have to watch out for, but I'm sure uh, both teams are aware of this one, but there's a hook already down and Fuichu taking down low. The Ignite dropped it onto and the heal looks like it should be enough to keep him alive and Fuichu able to survive, but yep. There is that damage and the power of the Thresh as well when you hit level two. Yeah, Cheeseburger or Kenton could have flashed to try and lock that down, but here's Positivity. Positivity looking to come in here, chasing after Cheeseburger. Going to be able to get the stun from the Braum passive, forces out the flash by Cheeseburger, able to escape. Nicely done by Cheeseburger. Gives a lot of pressure back towards Fuichu right there. Had he not been there, all of a sudden Fuichu has to recall, but now mid lane. Flash Cocoon attempted, wasn't able to land. Sword gets over the wall, escapes the repel from the Elise. Fancy feet right there, staying alive. Looks like actually down in this bottom lane, Fuichu and Valencium never did recall. So even though they are even in CS at the moment, it is scary times for them ahead down here in the bottom lane. No summoner spells on that AD carry, and Fuchu's got to get out of here relatively soon. Otherwise, just one hook from Kenton yeah. could just be GG for him. Heal's still up here for Cheeseburger as well, so... Lots of pressure coming out from this wooden bottom lane. Spider now without a flash, has a little bit lessened early game ganking potential, but is still hovering around this mid lane. Sword lost his flash and just sitting relatively low on mana, so could be looking for a shove and a recall coming up very soon. Spider also playing a very fitting champion for his name. Ha 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 ha. Wow. Yeah. That was brutal, but but accurate, I guess. You know, he was playing the <laughs> queen of the spiders. We just had to get it out early, all right? Like... Yeah, get, get, it, get it done now and... Then when it gets serious, we can really hit the nail on the head later. Oh yeah. Just setting it up for future years. So, oh to oh to start here, although we've been seeing action uh, in that bottom lane here and still Kenton and Cheese, we're gonna have this early lead. I think that will remain for a while here. The Thresh and the Lucian, such a powerful bottom lane. Uh, as we'll keep touching on. Yeah, Fuichu really needs to I guess get out. Now he's been able to sustain up a little bit with the Doran's blade and not worried about getting ganked too much down in the bottom lane when you're sitting underneath your turret until the level six yeah, comes around. The then middle. all of a sudden, everything starts to change when there's an Elise who has the repel to easily dive towers. Theral too. When Stand United comes up, you better believe that if Cheeseburger and Kenton can keep their opponents pinned down here in the bottom lane, not allow them to recall, the plays could be made down here very soon. 
Yeah, Thero versus Race by Jason, the top lane, the Shen we haven't seen before in this match. It's uh, pretty strong against traditional top and especially with the uh, the dodge that he can put out. But up against this uh, Galio, he's falling a bit behind in terms of CS right now. It's going to be very hard for Thero to shove back against this Galio for the time being, either until he gets a Tiamat or perhaps... Abami Cinder, just some sort of wave clear is really the only facet that uh, Shen is going to be lacking here in the early game. Mid lane is both hitting level 6. And we'll, it'll be interesting to see if they decide to start roaming around the map. Shretba going for the Ignite on the Vladimir is kind of interesting. Usually we kind of see a Ghost in there as well, but opts for a more aggressive summoner spell choice. Yeah, the Ignite really is for that level 6 all in. Vladimir has an insane amount of burst. When, of course, you factor in the Ignite added on there as well. But instead, he used the Hemo Plague to just clear away the wave. And I'm a little confused why he's still sitting around here. Of course, it isn't a cannon mini wave, so maybe a little bit harder to recall and still get back in time to not lose any minions to the turret. But it's probably going to be looking for a reset relatively soon. Yeah, so just be chilling in this middle lane here. Come on, junglers. We've been seeing positivity go for a bit more farming here. Uh, Throughout the map, he does have a slight CS lead over Spider right now. And, uh, I mean, it's been pretty passive from both of these guys, aside from a few early gank attempts, but we're on nothing too much. Level 6 hit, though, by both of these top lanes. Level 7 by Thero. They've been sitting on this for a while, but haven't had the, hasn't had the opportunity to look for a stand United yet. You know, slow early game is definitely going to benefit this Jax junk. Yeah. Scaling is definitely going to be here for the side of Wooten. And if they can stop any potential dives from happening, we see a TP top lane. So maybe alleviates a little bit of that pressure for the time being. If a race by Jason can hold on to it. Fighting though, they're going to get the stun down onto Kenton Trong here. But Stand United, there it is. Going to be coming in. Teleport forced out by the Galio Cheeseburger. Able to get that first blood as they take down the Braum. Erased by Jace now joining into the fight, trying to taunt up somebody, but now wants to back away because Spider's coming in here. A nice double root, though, from Fuichu looking to disengage, turning around the damage onto Kenton, able to pick him off and won't be able to respond. Wooten High School end, the, end, the, end up making it a one for one. Big mistake by Kenton right there, just not having very acute spatial awareness. Ended up trading one for one in, in a situation in which. Garden Grove should have come out massively on top right there. They got the Stand United to just turn around the skirmish in the bottom lane and still baited the TP out of a race by Jace. That means that he is losing some minions in the top lane. That means that he gets nothing down bottom. And unfortunately, for the side of Garden Grove, they end up trading evenly right there, which is not what they wanted to have happen. Like so. We'll end up being one for one. Both kills on the AD carries, and they're gonna get started up on their items with that BF sword, of course, from the Zaya as she's really will be rushing in for that Blade of the Ruin King on the Lucian here. So, I mean, you expected to have this dual lane do have be a little bit more dominant here, but Kenton Chong and Cheeseburger pretty much going blow for blow. Meanwhile, middle lane though, Sun in there, Sword gonna get taken out. Shretva finishes off that kill with the help of Spider. All series long, Sword has just been playing so disrespectfully in the mid lane. More often than not, it's worked out for him, albeit diving the mid lane tower, getting a big advantage for himself. But this time around, Look again, he's down level to six hit by Kenton Trong as they're going in for some damage on Valencia. I'm able to dodge away from the feathers. Cooling gonna be coming in there flashing, but Kenton Trong ends up finishing off that kill. Lands another hook here, and the play back onto Fuichu Featherstorm will be coming across though. And that'll just be a nice pick there. But top lane, gank coming in. Spider is here. Feral chasing after a race by Jace. Getting out with the heroic entrance, heroic exit for a race by Jace. Big misplays right there by Garden Grove. Let's start it off down in the bottom lane where Cheeseburger flashed with the culling still active to get the kill. Could have just canceled that. Yeah, just, yeah. Chad had a double tack, locked that one down anyways. Okay, he's out of a summoner spell. Then top lane two, Spider completely whips on the cocoon. Big error out of him, and that allows a race by Jace to escape. No questions asked. No questions asked indeed, but Shretfa. 
Gonna have a few questions asked him as Positivity coming in there with the stun. Now chasing after this Vladimir, able to finish them off with Nato. Walks down Strat, but CS lead doesn't really mean much. Whoever brings more game so far is going to find the advantage right there in the middle lane. And that kill in the mid, knowing that there was a recall from both Ken and Cheeseburger as well just a moment ago, should secure this first Drake of the game for Wooten. Yeah, going to be pretty easy for them here. They pull it out, but honestly, no contest coming out from Garden Grove. So Wooten High School able to pick up this first dragon of the game. Maybe just have I, that slight lead in objectives. <laughs> I'm not sure if you want to be there, Kenton. You don't have much of a, a team in the area, and I doubt a Thresh is going to steal away a dragon with a hook, although I have seen crazier things. Yeah, so. Race by Jay's pulling ahead in this top lane right now. Been growing slowly but steadily. Galio CS lead in the top lane. Of course, whenever a Stand United goes down, Theral's going to expect to lose a few minions. But still waiting on that, uh, waiting on the team out before he can fight back much in this lane. Yeah, so now sneaking into the bottom lane here is Spider. He's gonna be looking to get another gank down onto this bottom lane, and then I think this is the lane where you want to get him down because so much pick potential, and there is a hook point blank onto Fuichu. Stuns up with the cocoon, Cheeseburger takes down Fuichu. Easily done. Yeah, not even using a stand united right there. Maybe a little bit perplexed that Cheeseburger is going to be recalling right here. Sure, he's low on mana, but Garden Grove could have easily looked to pressure down that turret right there. No real way for Rutan to react and stop that one from happening. And they do stick around, but they're not going to be able to damage that turret too much. So, trades will continue, but Garden Grove High School looking to find some advantages here, and they will, and Cheeseburger picking up the second kill for himself, also slightly ahead of NCS right now, so he's looking good on this. Definitely is. Got our eyes on, still on Feral. Whether or not he's going to be using that ultimate anytime soon. And the mid lane once more, you know, harkens back to that game one where... There wasn't a whole lot that went down. It stayed fairly even across the board, although bottom lane has had so much fighting. Yeah, Valencia going to be hopping away there as damage coming off from Cheeseburger and Kenton is just absolutely huge. Calling to clear out the wave and just continue to apply pressure, but Sword is making a response. He's moving down to this bottom lane. Yeah, sort of spotted out on some wards on his attempted roam down into the bottom lane. That's why Cheeseburger actually used the culling right there to stop a potential dive. On the mid lane, though. Yeah, positivity. Ooh, taunted out away from that Stand United there, so... Gonna have to get that one canceled out. Meanwhile, Kenton Trong, you know, able to find another play back, but couldn't find a hook here. Valencium trying to get away, can't hit that hook either. Unfortunate there. Still, Fuichu and Valencia look like they want oh to Oh my gosh, the cocoon. cocoon lands right in front of the minions. The flash in, the chase after Sword. Spire picks up a well-deserved kill. Nicely done by him right there. And Sword, just a look of disbelief right there. Did not assume that that cocoon was going to hit him. LT would have flashed before that one locked him down. Unfortunate for him now, too. 0-2 in the mid lane. That's going to cost his team the rip Carol. Yeah, Rift Herald gonna go down here. Maybe this will be the second Rift Herald of the match here, and maybe we'll be seeing it used to a greater potential than Wooten's use of it in that last one. But inside the pit is positivity, followed up by Rift by Jace. They're all gonna be going down here. Spider falling as well. And the 2v3. Rift Herald picked up by Wooten. And so are three kills. Double kill for positivity. What is this game, Crusader? Meanwhile, so Flash, Flash in the bottom up. lane. They just took down Fuichu, and now they're looking what? for more Cheeseburger on a Rampage. Takes down two. Cheeseburger on a Rampage. That is true. Site 401 now 
on the Lucian while his entire team just gets obliterated around the Hifted Ritual. They give that one over to Wooten, and they're gonna lose the first turret, even though they did so much work down bottom all series long, they can't even They're gonna lose a second them. turret here as well, middle lane turret. It looks like it's gonna go down, so that's two turrets with that rip Herald. Quite a bit of value right there. Brutal loss right there, honestly. Two turrets for none oh. in return. Now, Positivity and Sword, they're moving up. They can steal away the blue buff, maybe even take a third turret yeah. of the game because a race by Jace has gotten that one down to next to nothing. No, a race by Jace got it all by himself here. Three turrets now in the lead for Wooten High School. Zero for Garden Grove. And how things change. And now just looking at the game, you wonder, Garden Grove really needs to start playing through this bottom lane. They're starting now. Yeah, that's gonna be another kill. 5-0 here for Cheeseburger. In the right place at the right time. And honestly, Fuichu probably shouldn't be walking up toward that. He doesn't know where the enemy is. Knows they're definitely not on the top side of the map. Now the rest of Garden Grove can really try to lock down this turn in the bottom lane, battle back a little bit in terms of gold, and they can look for more points. Yeah, I'm trying to take down Valencium there. Wasn't able to lock in onto him. And oh, another hook landing onto Valencium. Kenton's got his number. Shretfa finishes off that kill. It actually gets a teleport out of Theral too. Ended up canceling it. Knows that he does have this. I didn't care. A fight does wind up breaking out here. These hooks are so good, so close. Yeah. From Kenton. Kenton's looking huge on this champion right now. Is Mountain Drake gonna go down? Picked up by Garden Grove, and I mean something that will help them try to come back with all the with the two tower deficit that they're sitting at right now. Something that's also helpful is having your AD carry stacked up on five kills. Yeah, I mean, Cheeseburger is absolutely huge at the moment. Unfortunately, that's not going to mean too much if Sword can just press one button and instantly take him out. So at some point, he's going to have to itemize defensively here on the Lucian. Doesn't matter how far behind Sword has been shut down at the moment. You still don't really want to deal with all of that in the heat of the moment, but I really want to continue to see Garden Grove play around this bottom lane, or not necessarily around the bottom lane, but play around their duo lane. Wherever Cheeseburger and Ken end up going, that's where the play should be made. That's where Theral should be looking to utilize that stand United. And if they do that, Garden Grove could be able to win this game. Yeah, Garden Grove. They've got the kill advantage with all of those that have been stacking up in that bottom lane. The gold is just so close right now, so we could go either way, and Theral's going to be jumping onto a race by Jace here. Not too sure how much they can do against this Galio that already has a Bramblebeck Vest and the Spear of Visage, but they'll be chasing after him. Three members should be able to take down this Galio, surely. Oh my gosh, does he even take damage? Kenton Trong gonna be coming in here from the side, finds Positivity, Positivity wanted to go and then get it onto him, Heroic Entrance coming in, and here's the fight, shutdowns coming through, but they are gonna be losing Cheeseburger in the midst of it, Cheeseburger does fall a race by Jace, following there as well, a 1 for 2 in favor of Garden Grove, but they lose their tower down in the bottom lane. Yeah, but this is just pure evidence why Garden Grove should be playing around their duo. There's two members of Wooten down bottom lane. What are they going to do? They're just going to keep trying to shove. Unfortunately for them, though, Cheeseburger wound up going down. So killing this turret is going to take a whole lot longer than it probably should. And Kenton is actually getting down deep vision, which is beneficial, but it might cost them another turret turrets. in the bottom lane. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what, what can you say about that? No, Wooten, Wooten's like, you got, you got one minute. Five towers. That's an absurd number. Yeah. Wooden's like, you got a one for two in kills, or we'll get a one for two in turrets then. Five turrets to two there. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused by the Thorn Mail purchase by a race by Jace. You know, against the Vladimir, you do definitely want the Grievous Wounds, but all Strat has to do is not auto attack the, the Galio. And sure, I guess it cuts down on the Blade Rune King healing from Cheeseburger as well, but not sure if he needed to itemize that quite so early when perhaps a Frozen Heart would have been even more useful for that attack speed reduction. 
Race by Jace hovering around this middle lane, and yeah, you know that Thorn Mail, perfect counter to the to the Vladimir, right? Why why are you auto attacking him, man? <laughs> well, Shrek, what are you doing? Hook gonna why land. Why are you auto attacking? A race by Jace, far forward, but it gets the stun onto the back line. Cheeseburger take it out, positivity finishing him off. They catch off the AD carry. Can Garden Grove continue with this fight? Maybe they can. Theral takes on Valencia flash four by Kenton. Whoa. Can't catch on to anyone. Swear wants to come in here. So does Positivity erased by Jace. Taunt lands onto four. Keeping them contained here as Sweetu joins the fight as well. Sword takes down Kenton. Chasing after Shretfa, who was able to take down Erased by Jace. Shretfa, not too long for this world. Taken out by Positivity. And... All in all, three for two in favor of Wooten. Yeah, it's looking good for Wooten. This is the time they wanted to fight, too. Positivity just completed his Trinity 4, so 5, 1, and 2 at the moment. He's going to be an absolute beast in these skirmishes that do wind up breaking out. And as long as Wooten can knock out Cheeseburger initially yeah. at the start of the fight, and it he is did that easy there. Going. Galio and Jax jumping onto that back line. Makes it so easy to take down that, to take down that Lucian. So Cheeseburger are gonna have to struggle to find some footing here, and he's gotta play it safe in these fights. But it's so difficult here. So five, one, and two on this on positivity right now. He's looking absolutely deadly on this Jax. Now Cheeseburger does have some HP. In the belt, of, at the very least, he's got a black cleaver, and his buildings for some more attack speed. It looks like with the dagger in his inventory. Whether or not that's a, a phantom dancer or maybe even a rapid fire can, I think both are going to be fine options here. Because he definitely needs the range, and he definitely needs the damage reduction. Either one is ultimately going to keep him a little bit safer in these team fights. You'd have to assume, but he's not going to have much time before the next fight breaks out. Another dragon coming up in 45 seconds. If Garden Grove decide to fight that, which honestly, a composition like this, they probably should. He's got to be really, really careful about how close he gets to sword and end positive. Yep, so, we in high school looking to start to push up these lanes here as this Cloud Drake going to spawn soon. Race by Jace could get cut off, but this is like the third time they've cut out a race by Jace in the last two times. Nothing has really come of it. Uh, that Galio is just too tanky at this point in the game. Shredbug going to get aggressive here, and here comes Positivity. Heroic Entrance going to be dropped down here as well, but Cheeseburger still in the back line looking to do damage. Going to get taunted up by the Galio though, and taking a lot of damage. Huichu coming in from the side as well. And Kenton Trong already down, flashing health bars for Garden Grove High School, trying to disengage here. Stun onto Cheeseburger, looking to escape here. And he will be able to. Meanwhile, Shretfa is still on the run. Yeah, huge team fight right there from Wooten. They're going to try and chase down for every single kill. Maybe not going to be likely that they lock down on towards Shretfa, but there is a Drake available for them. And that's uh, some interesting pathways from the Vlad. Was able to get out of it though, so he'll be able to survive. But once again, this Cloud Drake's still gonna go down for Wooten High School. They'll pick up their second dragon of the game, continue to hold this lead. Wow, look at the itemization here from Positivity. He uh, has no fear in the world going for Hex Tech Gunblade next for even more burst, even more stupid damage, and a little bit of sustain. Even though eventually he's going to probably need to build some tank stats. Yes, he does have the hero's entrance for some damage reduction. But pretty soon that probably won't be enough with all the sustained damage that Garden Grove do have. That's one of their major benefits is that they can, they don't really, they're not really locked in to dealing damage with their ultimate. Sure, they probably need the Stand United, maybe even the Hemo Plague to have a big effect. But outside of that, not going to be... Too detrimental if they're missing a few of those ultimates like the culling or even the box from the thresh. If they fight continuously, it might be beneficial. Whereas, of course, on the other side of things, there's a whole lot of big team fight ultimates that have huge impacts that Wooten are definitely going to ha want to have in all of these engagements. Yeah, so we are seeing now Wooten in high school 
with this lead. Poise to take their second grand. Poise to say poise to take their second championship here. Positivity already. A high school starling champion could go for the repeat here. However, Garden Grove High School, they do have Cheeseburger here still stacked up with the kill. 6, 2, and 5. That's kind of impressive kill participation there as well. But I mean that last fight, he didn't get he didn't get taken down, but couldn't get through that tank line of Wooten High School. Now almost feels like the time to fight for Garden Grove. There's about to be some big item spikes for Wooten, whether it's the Gargoyle Stone Plate in the top lane, the Leandri is the next zeal item from Fuichu. Give a couple more minutes over towards Wooten, and fighting's gonna be very difficult, so almost starting up this Baron is a blessing for Garden Grove if they can get a good team fight. Oh my god, it's being bursted down so low though, Baron already gone and the teleport coming in but kenton's getting bursted down treffa getting in there as well throw gadgets coming across Daryl is on that back line so is spider but they can't get the damage down cheeseburger was nowhere to be seen for most of that fight Daryl goes down double kill for fuichu positivity flashing forward takes down kenton four for none and the baron for thomas s wooden that was the perfect time for garden grove to look for a team fight there but they got absolutely smashed there wasn't enough damage, there wasn't the focus that came through from Garden Grove. Shrepa got a big hemo play, got a lot of damage down, but ultimately, Garden Grove could not knock out a single member of Wooten. Couldn't get that big break in the team fight, and Wooten are just going to walk straight into their base. In 2015, Thomas S. Wooten defeated Temple City in the Grand Finals 3-1. They're looking to do the same thing again to Garden Grove High School as they take down the inhibitors. Two inhibitors down, 27 minutes in. Temple City when the commanding lead now 11,000 gold ahead and now there's still two-thirds of the Baron buff duration available only one more inhibitor turret left and then they've got all three that is so detrimental here the hopes have to be almost fleeing the mines of Garden Grove they need that one big team fight they need another big team fight after that they cannot lose one more time otherwise the whole tournament is over for them and this is the final match of the high school star league for this season and thomas s wooden poised to take it all here with positivity leading the charge here absolutely a monster throughout this entire series Absolutely. And on the other side of things, it's Cheeseburger. He is going to have to pull out the carry performance of a lifetime in this next fight. He's got a QSS now, maybe a little bit of added safety against him, but the rest of his team has got to step up too. They've got to figure out some way to engage this fight before the Super Minions. Oh boy. Super Minions pushing in on both lanes. They are buff minions and remember three champions pushing in the bottom lane. Inhibitor turret going down, nothing they can do to stop it. Garden Grove High School getting pushed in on Wooten is moving forward. Glacial Fisher coming across. This is gonna be the third inhibitor, 28 minutes in. And the flash in erased by Jace onto Cheeseburger. They wanna burst him down. A double kill coming in for his sword. And now they're swarming the base here. Heroic entrance right outside the fountain as the Nexus turrets go down. This is gonna be it. Thomas Sess Wooten High School, the best high school in North America, champions once again. Claiming their thrones off the back of positivity, off of sword, massive carry performances from those two players and the rest of the team all series long. There's no doubt in anyone's minds that Thomas S. Wooten is the best team in North America. Yeah, and just a great performance coming through them. They had a hard bracket. They had to go through the number one seeded team in the whole playoffs, but were able to make it through. And once again, Wooten High School pick up their second high school star league championship, which makes them the only team to have repeated uh, as champions here for League of Legends, at least. And a very impressive way to do it as well. Not only did they show their prowess as individual players, but also the way they played the map, getting so many turrets, using that Rift Herald to take two towers of their own in the mid lane all series long. They were really taking it to Garden Grove High School. A valiant effort.
from the boys of GGHS, but ultimately it was just not enough. Cheeseburger could not carry hard enough in that final kill up against the powerhouse that is Thomas H. S. Wooten. Yeah, and this was just the great playoffs coming in from us and the final standings for everybody who doesn't know. Thomas S. Wooten claiming first place, Garden Grove with the second place spot. Harvard Collegiate in third and in fourth will would be Montville Township Secondary School. Those are your top four for the high school star league 2017 playoffs. But Ender, that's all we have for the rest of you uh, for the rest of the season here. But make sure to follow HS Star League for updates and when our next season will be starting up. You can check out our website hsstarleague.com as well as on Twitter and Facebook at HS Star League. You can see all that on your screen now. And Ender, just any last thoughts before we close out the season? All I can say is that it was a well thought. Anyone watching to can second that, I am sure. A very long season. I know just how long that season can be from playing it myself. And having the mentality and the fortitude to go all the way to the finish is an impressive feat, to say the least. So congratulations to both of these teams for earning their prize money, but specifically Wooten High School for their massive victory 3-1 in this set. Yeah, and if you uh, enjoyed the casting here today, make sure to follow us on Twitter at CrusaderKitten and at EnderL to figure out what we'll be doing during the HSL offseason. But that's going to be it, Ender, for everyone here at the High School Star League. This is going to be us signing off, and we'll see you all next season.